Good morning, Rockford Public Schools, and welcome back to day number two of the 2021 school year. Thanks for all of the work that you did yesterday. It was great to have everybody back in buildings yesterday. I hope you felt that sense of community and something that is beginning already this year. And so thank you for um, everything that you contributed. Message today is really to build on um, yesterday. And the purpose of my conversation today will be threefold in a broad way, right? It will be certainly to remind, prioritize, and then begin with an outcome today of being ready to launch into our work after this message with your grade level or with your department. So first of all, I wanna take a look at the big picture of thinking for the Rockford Public Schools this year. Yesterday, Corey talked with you about our collective commitments and I bring those again to your attention today. Number one stands out to me the most when we think about our collective commitments. We will take collective responsibility for the success of every single student, no matter the situation. And we know that we have a challenge in front of us now. I don't wanna think about the long-term school year and what the end of the year wants is going to be like. We need to think about a small chunk as we consider how we are going to take collective responsibility for every single student. I again ask you to reference these collective commitments. They were brought um, to fruition by us and they are our beliefs that we will continue to decision make and program around. I'd also like to take a moment and look back to remind, our district has done so much work to be reflective of our, our instructional practices. We've done so much collaborative work to align curriculum and determine what are the essential content components that every kid must learn. We have built structure to support high quality instruction. We have thought about an teacher leadership team at another level that can be representative of the classroom and those and the influence that that group can has. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like we are poised again to build on a successful foundation that we built last year despite COVID-19. So we'll take this year in some chunks, but we must remember our identity. And our identity is one that is an emergingly innovative district when it comes to the instruction and the influence that our students are afforded every day because of you. I thank you for that. And I wanna remind you of that so we can continue to build despite what seems like a largest uh, distraction at this time. Also wanna think about that PLC launch that I mentioned yesterday and where we thought we were going and where we are going to focus our efforts. Last year, we built readiness around question number one and priority standards alignment. We were poised to think about question number two this year and have, frankly, a lot of planning that's already done for how we will know that the students have learned it. And all of the assessment com components that go along with that, be it the mindset around assessment, the architecture around assessment, how we will react to student evidence of learning as produced by the assessments. That will come, but it's time to slow down and think about the priorities. Instead, our focus for our pre-LC launch will be us, that power of us, that, co that collective collaboration that we know is strong in our district, that we continue to build, and that we will continue to strengthen. When we think about collaboration, it's more than people discussing something and then leaving with maybe unexpected outcomes. I want us to think about collaboration in this way. You see it on the screen here. Collab the purpose of collaboration is to help more students achieve at a higher level. This can only be accomplished if professionals engaged in collaboration are focused on the right work. And I challenge you this, this year to think about the right work to think about the work that's in front of us right now with our remote learning next three weeks of the year and what are the essential concepts that must be focused on, be it relationships, right? Be it the content around priority standards, identifying students that might have social emotional um, needs and, and really trying to get them some intervention, thinking about the right work, but also thinking about work that it has meaningful outcomes through our collaboration. We have a strong engine. We're gonna to continue to build that as we move on this year. Remember, as mentioned yesterday, our calendar is very much set up to, to structure a lot of time collaborating together. And I showed you this yesterday and you see that we frankly have about roughly two meetings per month. We'll learn more and talk about the purpose and then the format for these meetings as we move into September. 
But certainly, we want to think about aligning by department, by grade level, by course, and focusing on instruction and evidence of student work. Also, when we drill down a little bit more into the calendar for collaboration this year, I want to also just emphasize this. We want to meet you where your needs are right now. Our district has an agenda around the PLC purpose and, as I mentioned, a vision for question number two. However, we must understand the situation and the challenges that we have right now and give our undivided attention to that. Layer in what we can in order to continue to build our foundation, but think about how we must address our current situation around COVID-19 and the instructional influence that it will have. And lastly, when we think about the big picture of the 2021 school year, I want you to think about this term called instructional agility. No doubt about it, we will have to adjust this year. We're going to adjust at the beginning of the year because of the way our students are coming into us having not been in face-to-face -face instruction since the middle of March. We know that this year might have some twists with us moving in and out of remote learning. We have a plan right now. That plan is to focus on these next three weeks. After those three weeks, we'll focus on face-to-face -face instruction and we'll adjust and we'll learn from what we do and we will make adjustments. We must be ready as a district and in your planning for your own instruction to be able to move in and out perhaps of this remote learning and face-to-face -face. or when we have a student that's in your class that is at an extended absence, that student can still participate in your class because you're building in Schoology or Seesaw and those students still have access. So we must have a, um, an agile approach to our instructional influence this year. All right, so let's talk about some bite-sized chunks. If we think about this as a mountain, it's, one, it's going to be one step at a time. So when we think about these bite-sized chunks and what we can do right now, I want to think about these first three weeks. You've spent some time learning about the details and dialoguing about the details of our remote learning plan. We have great intention to further or additionally engage our students in a higher level of learning than what we did in the spring. And we know that that interactive piece and the structure can provide a framework for you, but in the end, it's going to be up to you to really use this framework to positively influence your students. So let's take a few pieces here. First of all, let's talk, talk about the essential priority standards for the year. If you have not, I want you to take a look at the curriculum website which has your priority standards published. Congratulations and thank you for the work that you did around our priority standards last year. We have taken that work and we've put it into our curriculum website which is linked under staff links on the Rockford Public Schools page. On this website you'll find all of your priority standards under question number one professional on the professional learning communities path. We go to the four questions and then I really would like to make sure each of you takes a moment and as you can see selects your priority standards and reviews your own grade or course level priority standards as a first step to considering what we will focus on during this first chapter of the school year. It's all there and it's done in an exceptional way. For now, we know that we will also need to continually refine these priority standards and the work around how we have them unpacked and mapped. That is a process that will be ongoing and engaging for the rest of time, really, until we are really honed in and we really feel confident about what they are and how we will continue to instruct around them. So for now, we want to you to have the identify phase. We know that you know what they are. We'll focus on them and continue to use the work that you've done in the unpacking and alignment piece. I also want to take a minute and think about another step, which would be to build on the collaborative practices that you did in the spring of last year by grade level, by department, by course, you collaborated together to produce a product of our Rams Connect or our remote learning at the time that engaged our students and families and provided a 
best possible instructional experience for the situation. And we're very confident that in our agility this year, you're going to use that engine again. So as you think about the collaboration this year and you look at the schedule, I would urge your department, your grade, your cohort, if you will, to understand or adopt a time and a structure that will continue to facilitate that high quality of education through a remote learning framework. Also, I just want you to adopt this idea of the fact that we're going to have to reflect and adjust, not only as a system, but I'd like you to consider how you're doing that in your classroom as well too. There are some unknowns to start the year. I absolutely, we're gonna to need to consider how we can meet the needs of our students that we might not expect yet. Please have your eyes open, listen, watch, and adjust where necessary so that we can, again, do our best to meet the, lead, the needs of every single kid as we have stated and belief in our collective commitments. All right, let's move to today. Two parts. Momentarily, you're going to begin a remote tool training led by an academic excellence team member. That um, academic excellence team member has gone to a training earlier in August, collectively has decided on some specific pieces that our teachers and staff members all must know as we embark on this remote learning journey. And we're gonna do a little bit of an onboarding around that. Part two of today will be specific to classroom lesson planning in grade levels, in departments, or by course. And also, if you have a role outside of a classroom teacher, how you can apply those remote learning tools and concepts to, the, to your role in order to support students. So right after this presentation, you can expect a brief training around the tools that we can use to help support our influence in our remote learning environment. Some of them are familiar, some of them will be new, but again, if we can tool ourselves with some of these resources, we can better serve our students through the remote learning plan. And I know, as we think about some of these tools, they'll also serve our face-to-face -face instruction as well. Also, in order to help facilitate some of our planning, we have adopted a remote learning planning template that will align with the manner in which you are learning the tools. It's going to have four phases to it. You can see it here. The front half of it will be about engaging our students. The next piece will be about instructing, explaining, if you will, new content. We'll also consider ways in which we assess and finally give feedback to our students. So everything will be built in those four pillars so that we can have a structured lesson plan in an effort to support you while you're planning and also the experience of the students on the uh, other end of the computer, if you will. All right, our school year is long and I want you to not think about the end. I want you to think about the beginning. What are the things that you can control now? What is the content that you must emphasize? What is the structure by which you will collaborate with your colleagues in order to assist with your lesson planning? We can do this together. We'll take one step at a time. We'll reflect, we'll adjust, we'll communicate along the way and again, I'm proud to be working alongside you, and I know that the Rockford Public Schools community is proud to have you representing us and influencing the students of Rockford Public Schools. Thank you.